Welcome to the August 2007 video podcast from Imaginova Studios. August 1st and the constellations of summer are displaying the wonders of the night sky. Take a look in the south to see an arrangement of stars that suggest the shape of a teapot. It's the constellation Sagittarius. Can you see the steam rising from the teapot? You are looking towards the center of our Milky Way galaxy. If you have binoculars, check this area of the sky for hidden treasures. Two stellar nurseries, the Trifid Nebula and Lagoon Nebula, are giving birth to new stars. This star-rich region also has many beautiful star clusters to explore. Now let's take a look at an easier target. Moving a little to the right of Sagittarius, we come upon the majestic planet Jupiter only five degrees above the bright orange star, Antares. Those of you with small telescopes will be rewarded when you see Jupiter. Atmospheric cloud bands and up to four of Jupiter's many moons will be visible. Over the course of an evening, watch how the moons change their position as they orbit the giant planet. Now let's move down to Antares, the glowing orange heart of Scorpius, the Scorpion. Antares is a red giant star and one of the brightest in our skies. If we were to put Antares in the place of our Sun, Mercury, Venus and our Earth would be inside this Goliath. Let's move on now to the very early hours of August 12th. Take a look in the Northeast. There you will see the lazy W of the constellation Cassiopeia. A little below this constellation marks Perseus, the radiant or source area of the Perseids meteor shower. Meteor showers are best experienced without a telescope or binoculars. Just sit back in your lawn chair and see how many meteors you can count over an hour, and although they seem to radiate from the same point, in this case the constellation Perseus, you will see them all over the sky. Country dwellers have the definite advantage here. In very dark skies, you will see more. But what is a meteor shower? Meteor showers are the product of our fast-moving Earth going through the debris trail of a comet. The flash of light marks the path of a small cometary fragment as it streaks through our atmosphere. These fragments are usually no larger than a grain of sand. August 13th shows the planet Neptune in the faint constellation Capricornus. You'll need binoculars or a small telescope to see this blue planet, now in opposition and at its best viewing position this year. Moving on to August 28th, viewers in parts of North America, South America, Australia and New Zealand will get to experience an eclipse of the moon. Viewers in Australia and New Zealand will get the best show with other areas seeing the beginning, the end or a partial eclipse. Here's how it looks. As the moon enters the penumbra, the outer area of Earth's shadow, you will see a bite taken out of our close lunar neighbor. Over time, the moon will pass into the region of deepest shadow, known as the umbra. There it will turn a deep reddish-orange color. That color comes from sunsets and sunrises from all around the Earth being reflected off of our moon. Pretty, isn't it? This is a great opportunity to use that camera that's been sitting in your drawer. Take a series of pictures throughout the eclipse. Very nice! Interested in learning more? Find our charts, observing tips, and other great stargazing tools available online at space.com slash night sky. Graphics for this video podcast created with the award-winning Starry Night Planetarium software. Thanks for watching and clear skies!